We're not going to drive the Lupo GTI just yet, but we're going to drive the Bilstein UP GTI and the normal UP GTI on some brilliant local roads. Hello guys and welcome to this Volks Wizard video and in today's video for the very first time we're going to have a look at a modified UP GTI. I don't mean something as simple as a remap because in my personal opinion you may disagree with this. I don't feel this car needs any more power or torque than it's already got because traction is pretty limited at the best of times. But there is one area that can be improved and that is suspension. Volkswagen only had a very limited budget when they built this car and they did a great job for the money but if you spend a bit more you can make this car ride and handle much better and the owner of this car has done exactly that. He's fitted a Bilstein coilover suspension kit so without any further ado, let's have a closer look at this Bilstein coilover equipped UP GTI. Okay, firstly, let's have a look at the way it looks. Now, coilovers by their very nature are adjustable. This is not my setup. It is probably a bit lower than I'd have it. I would probably want it halfway between where it is now and the standard car. So it's roughly 40 mil drop at the back, 30 mil at the front. front. Bear in mind the ground is not flat here, so that will look even lower at the back than it is. I've measured it on the flat over here. I'll put the pictures on the screen now. It's roughly 40 back, 30 mil front. So if you're only interested in the way the car looks, then thanks for watching. Please comment, please share, please subscribe. See you for the next one soon. If you're interested in the way the car drives, stay tuned because we're gonna go and drive it on a variety of roads and compare it with this standard car. But before we do that, let's put it in the workshop and put it on the ramp and have a look at the suspension kit as it's fitted on this UP GTI. Okay guys, as you can see, we've got the Bilstein UP GTI in the air behind me. But before we have a look at what's been fitted to it, let's have a look at the box that it all came in. So a bit confusingly, the box says B14 and B16, but I'm pretty sure we've got the 14, the cheaper version, because we haven't got an adjuster at the bottom of the strut. Whatever, the part number that's been fitted to this car is that one. So if you want to order the same, that's what you need to order. These were ordered in the summer of 2019, so should still be current. Okay, so let's start at the back then. So just like the normal car, we've got a separate spring and damper. The big difference is we've got the adjustable spring height there, spring platform. So you, that's how much it is off the lower setting, which is probably about probably at 12 to 15 mil, but you've got all this adjustment underneath the platform to make it higher. So I reckon you could get easily as high as a standard up GTI, possibly even as high as like a base up. So yeah, there's loads of adjustment there. At the front, again, it looks pretty normal, but we've got adjustable spring height there. So we're about, again, my finger's width up from bottom, again, about 12, 12 mil, I'd guess. But underneath the dust cap, there's a whole load more there, I reckon at least 30 mil so yeah you could get it as high as you need to now before we go driving i just thought i'd give you a quick tour of this lupo gti which will be coming to the channel very soon as a project car it's um, a two owner car the lady owner that traded it in for an up gti funnily enough had it for 19 years so she had it from virtually brand new it's done 64,000 miles and it's quite an unusual spec because it's got leather and air conditioning. So it's a five-speed car as well, being so early. Um, so yeah, it's well worth spending a bit of money on to make it right. It is in no way perfect. You know, there's lacquer peeling there, which is probably quite normal. There's a bit of corrosion there, which again, it's not unusual. More lacquer there, that door's actually a different colour. So mainly it's the paintwork, but it's mainly paintwork that costs a lot of money. But I think it's well worth investing in it. Anyway, without any further ado, we're not going to drive the Lupo GTI just yet, but we're going to drive the Bilstein UP GTI and the normal UP GTI on some brilliant local roads. Okay guys, here we are behind the wheel of the standard UP GTI. I want to drive these cars on four different types of road, which you've got kind of readily available out here. So I want to try some speed humps, I want to try a bumpy B road, I want to try a smooth B road, and I want to try a dual carriageway, which will also double for sort of motorway driving. So here we have some speed humps. Now the UP isn't particularly brilliant over these because it's narrow, so it does make the suspension work quite hard because each wheel 
hits the hump while bigger cars would would miss it and yeah it's all right I don't think even with the best suspension it's going to be that good because it's uh, it's just so narrow across the wheels um, but we'll try that with the bill steins anyway but that was about 25 miles an hour on those humps and they're quite gentle as speed humps go next up let's go to a bumpy british b road that you may have seen an up gti driven on on this channel before okay guys here we are on a bumpy british b road in the standard up gti we're also in a bit of a hailstorm which has been typical of february 2020 the sooner we get out of february i think the better but anyway it doesn't really affect the testing too much of this car i've driven this car on this car on this road many a time before maybe not in a hailstorm admittedly and it feels all right it's um it doesn't bang and crash too much it's it can be a bit turbulent i mean this road's barely got any bumps in it but i'm being bobbed around a bit so even though the car sits high it's still quite a busy ride there's, i mean there's some minor bumps there there's a bit of banging from the suspension not the horrible bangs you get when it bottoms out which does happen a lot i'm not gonna replicate that in this car because it's just not very pleasant and in the corners it feels all right but i will always remember the first two up gti's i ever drove the one from cheltenham vw and the press launch car at Crickal, and how they just felt really vague when you load them up and both of them sort of washed out into understeer without really communicating that and i still I still remember that every time I drive one and, and I still have to temper my driving of them because of that because they, those two cars nearly caught me out I've been driving for uh, 26 years now and I've never had a car that nearly sort of threw me off the road um, like those two now the first one had pretty much brand new tires and the second one it was a quite a cold day but even so you'd think you can drive to the limits of the car and the car will tell you what those limits are but that one didn't so anyway let's try some corners it's wet now so it's four and a half degrees this is not ideal but so you know it's just massive understeer then which won't be helped by the tires or the temperature uh, Yeah, it's. I still love driving it. I just feel there could be a little bit more feedback and composure when you get sort of towards the limits of grip and you're driving beyond about seven, seven and a half tenth. Up to that point, it feels magic. Uh, it doesn't feel too crashy on roads like this, really. So that's a pretty good showing for the standard car on this bumpy British B road. Let's go and try it now on a smoother one. Okay guys, so here we are on a smoother British B road, which is a lot less bumpy, but the corners are a bit faster and it's wet, it's about four and a half degrees. So it's not ideal, but I suppose the limits of grip are lower so we can feel them coming at safer speeds. This is one of my favourite corners and it feels good but the problem is the steering feel doesn't change as you load the car up so you just don't know if grip's sort of ebbing away until it's too late. Um, it's still great and considering the budget it's good to drive and this is a 60 mile an hour road the corners are pretty challenging it's wet it's only four degrees but you can still drive it at 60 and have a lot of fun it's just the communication side of it is where it seems to be lacking uh, it's not really its abilities to go around corners i'm sure it, it's it's still really good it's just i like to be 
tuned into what a car's going to do and it just feels like it's got radio silence. So it be interesting to try this road in particular with a Bilstein kit because this is where I feel the improvements will be the most. Now let's go and try a sort of fast dual carriageway stroke motorway and see how it handles that. Okay, now we're on a dual carriageway at about 70 miles an hour. I'm doing this test because I've driven up GTIs on motorways and they felt okay until you then drive a normal car on a motorway like a Golf and the Golf is completely composed and placid while the up GTI is still bobbing around like a tuna on a trawler deck. And yeah, I mean, this road isn't obviously perfect, but it's not got any real imperfections that would need repairing or anything it's just the texture of the surface and I can feel everything and it just gave me a bit of a headache and that's why, one of the reasons why I got rid of my car when I knew I'd be moving house and driving on motorways a lot so it'd be interesting to see if the Bilstein car is actually worse there's only one way to find out so let's go and drive the Bilstein car now okay guys so now we are behind the wheel of a pretty much identical car but fitted with Bilstein coilovers and we're going to try the speed humps first that bong was just to say it's four degrees so it's not brilliant but it's so hard to get cars like these together for comparisons that when they are around you've just got to you've just got to get the videos done okay that definitely feels firmer but oddly enough it feels a bit more solid what by that I mean that it's hard but it doesn't feel like it's going to bottom out like the standard car does so if you hit a speed up too hard in that you'll soon get a bang and this car feels like it's firm but it's absorbing the shock in better than standard so that's that's quite interesting that's so interesting I want to do that again just to make sure Okay, so it's a 20 mile an hour speed limit here. So let's just do that at 20, so that's third gear. Yeah. Okay, let's just go a tiny bit faster now. So that's bloody impressive actually. <laughs> So it doesn't feel like the standard car where it feels firm and you think it would ride like that but it then kind of sort of loosens up on compression and you get the banging it feels like a better shock absorber like it's absorbing the shock better so that's really rather interesting okay we've done speed hump let's go out into the countryside now and get onto that bumpy british b road okay guys so here we are on the bumpy british b road it's now three and a half degrees in the Bilstein equipped up GTI and the ride is for sure a little bit busier than the standard car I mean that's not the most placid of places to be on a road like this so it's only a little bit worse but it definitely feels a little bit more turbulent the question is is it worth bit of compromise with the ride comfort to have a car that handles or feels better in these conditions it feels pretty confidence inspiring nice and it handles the bigger bumps pretty well probably at least as good as a standard car because we've got better quality suspension deployed in this one and do that again the beauty of filming on a wet day like this is that you don't get so much traffic in the summer this road's a bit of a nightmare but actually today it's quiet so into third for this corner let's get on the gas early okay it spun up a bit but it didn't feel as scrabbly probably because the unweighted wheel is, is not as unweighted when the car's this low and there's less roll. That felt pretty good. We can still do our sort of 60 miles an hour on this road 
in these conditions on this firmer suspension. Over the crest it feels lovely and it feels like there's less pitch as well so you brake and the front of the nose isn't the nose of the car isn't going down which feels a lot nicer as well. Got horizontal rain right now. Okay, so that's cool. Okay, as the speed pump hinted, it's it's firmer, but it doesn't seem to want to crash as much as a standard car because there's a lot more depth to it. It's damping. Wow, looking at the speedo in the wet, that's just amazing. Mm. Okay, on to the smooth B road next. Okay guys, now we're on the smoother B road and the car feels a little bit more comfortable on this kind of road. Um, there's still quite a bit more deflection than you get in the standard car. But it feels now that like it, the suspension's really up to its game on this kind of road. So it just feels more like a golf, which is probably about as good a compliment as you can get, which I mean they're a lot wider, they've got a lot wider track, but it kind of feels that like the track's been widened on this car now. Which means it feels a lot more stable. You do still have to watch the bumps, but like I said before, you never feel like they're gonna get the suspension to bottom out, which is probably one of the biggest improvements. So, let's see how we get on here. It's wet, it's cold. It just feels full throttle now. It just feels like you could have done that at a lot higher speed, which wouldn't have been the case in the standard car. So yeah, bearing in mind that we're pretty much slammed as it's set up now, this is not my choice, this is how the car came. I reckon with a bit of fine tuning, you could get this car to be a bit more comfortable than it is now, no, no less comfortable than the standard car, and go around corners in a totally different way to the standard car. It's amazing, but it's only a tonne. So it should be able to go around corners like the best of them. Anyway, let's go and finish off now with a ride on the motorway stroke dual carriageway. Okay guys, here we are on the dual carriageway then at about 70 miles an hour. And it doesn't feel massively different to the standard car. That's not the most plush of cruisers anyway. Um, so yeah, it might feel a little bit more turbulent, but yeah, it's not like we've taken a Golf, which was a plush rider on this kind of road, and turned it into a bone shaker. This car was pretty firm as it was, so yeah, it's not, it's not night and day by any means. And I think it's a pretty good compromise because this car's transformed on B roads, which are the roads it's designed for. It was never really designed to be a good, a good motorway car. So, to conclude, I wouldn't actually want to drive another up GTI on standard suspension after driving this one, because it's just so much better. It feels like a Golf where there's enough budget from the factory to make the car ride and handle uh, in, a, in a very well-balanced way. And, yeah, so I'm actually excited now about buying another up GTI and putting this suspension kit on it, putting some good tyres on it, because I can tell there is potential for this car to be significantly better than the standard car, which was great for the money, but once you've made those two modifications, this car will just be great. There will be no, no mention of how much it costs. It will just be an amazing hot hatch. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this box with a non-sponsored video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment, please share, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one really soon.